good warm morning. I'm here in Omaha and I'm gonna use every trick in the book, you know, since Lincoln and Omaha here, no free campsites. So I am utilizing a great resource from freecampsites.net here at Cabela's, which allows overnight parking. It's apparent this is another big class A behind me, got the same idea. Uh, for a safe spot to park the RV, but I got the bike so I can go take that downtown and just like uh, Lincoln, I'll be able to uh, maneuver around. It's great because I probably wouldn't be able to do this in the past before I had another source of transportation. You know, once I park the RV in a comfortable spot, you know, get everything set up and get all the fans running in uh, all the windows and everything, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wanna bring this thing around. It, it's just no, it's just not fun bringing an RV into any big city. So, but I do want to see what Omaha has. Uh, this is my last day in Nebraska. So let's go see what I can find for like Eric Corky or possibly Lincoln Highway related stuff in Omaha. And then uh, stick around to the end of the video. I have an update I want to share with you. Some some changes on the way. Uh, but in the meantime, let's uh, let's have fun in, in Omaha today. Wow. wow. You think we need to stretch the cat legs? Okay, well, let's stretch the cat legs then. That pavement might be too warm. Let me see. Oh, no, it's okay. What's the plan here? I know, but what's the plan? You just gonna meow at everything? Hey, stretch your paws, man. I'll be gone for a couple hours. I'll bring you back some nice food, okay? Are you gonna go sniff that over there? Okay, let's go ahead and sniff that then. Okay. Who are you talking to? Do you want to have your lunch early today, Jax? Do you want to eat early? Hello. Are you hungry? You want to eat early? Yeah? Lucky cat. I'm going to eat at 10 a.m. You tricked me. Okay. All right, Buster. You got food and water. You're good to go. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Oh, okay. Nice day, pretty pink trees. By the way, that's the first time I've, I've ever ran out of gas on the TW200. Just was not paying attention to the odometer and uh, ran out of gas. Had to use reserved and then get to a gas station. That's uh, convenient. That's the first time I've ran out of gas though. <laughs> and not sure if I mentioned it, but it's 18 miles from where I parked at Cabela's to downtown Omaha. So I'm quite a distance away, far enough away that it was nice not bringing the RV in. Did get some tips on uh, where to start my day here. So I'm starting at Kennefick Park and there are some big steam locomotives up on this uh, pretty trail. So we'll go for a little walk up here. They have a, a tram that will take you up and down. I don't know how far it is. I was just gonna walk though. Let me see, I got uh, a layer of sunscreen on as well, and I brought the sunscreen with me, 100 SPF, because I burn bad. I love the sun, but I burn bad. Interesting artwork off the side here, big uh, train tires, wheels. I got some plaques here talking about the history of the Union Pacific Railroad and Omaha. It says here, Lincoln established the eastern terminus of the railroad as the eastern boundary of the Missouri River directly across from Omaha City. Pretty cool park as you're walking up. Cheap farms, free homes on the line of the Pacific Railroad. <laughs> oh, 
Oh boy, and there we go. Oh, those are some big boys. There's two of them. I do apologize. It looks like everything here is going to be shot directly into the sun. But you got that one there. And this one is actually the largest steam train ever built. There's a picture of it in action there, working here at the yards. The big boy locomotive 4023. It has a pulling power equal to 7,000 horsepower at its 70 miles per hour design speed. Woo! There she is, guys. <laughs> As I stand next to it, see how tall the wheels are? Taller than I am. Well, I do apologize for the highway noise, but there's 80 coming in from Iowa. So that's Iowa right over there. And that's your welcome. You get to see this off the highway. And I'm still hunting for uh, some lunch ideas. I don't have any plans for lunch, so we'll just have to uh, look around. Anyway, sorry for all the background noise and everything. Let's get back to the bike and get back on the road. That is so funny. I just said I was hungry and I had no plans when you're looking for a sign and all of a sudden there's a huge fork in the road with spaghetti on it. Yeah. Somebody's uh, piece of artwork here. Yeah, that's uh, art with a huge fork and spaghetti. And as it turns out, there is a pizzeria cafe right down here. So I'm gonna go try that out for Grub here in Omaha. Mm. If you could smell what I'm smelling right now here at Orsi's Bakery, and pizzeria oh man that smells good well i ordered my pizza from this neat little they're like a deli too so they got deli stuff and they're uh, working on making this into a seating area so now i'm gonna eat in here enjoy some air conditioning and just kind of set up a seat here in the waiting area and then get back on the road doesn't get much better than that guys i've got pepperoni and bacon in there and some cheese bread on the way too Mm. I'll get back to you. Yeah, it took me a while to figure out uh, who this statue is here. I was thinking in my mind, who's a, who's a famous chef? And then I looked on his shirt. It says Chef Boyardee. So raviolis, spaghettios, all those goodens that you find. Here's a statue for Mr. Chef Boyardee. <laughs> kind of different, right? Uh, I'm parked over here in the shade. Nice park over here. I want to go check out the park real quick. Um, are you kidding me? This is beautiful here in Omaha. Check out this park. I mean, could the grass be any greener? Look at these beautiful trees. Look at this massive fountain. Whoa. I can actually feel the mist of that water from standing right here. Is the lens getting wet? A little bit. That feels good though. Wow, look how blue the water is. Gosh, Omaha. Wow. That's cool. I was wondering what that sign meant that said purchase gondola tickets. I guess in the summertime, uh, you can rent like a Venice style gondola and take a take a cruise out here in the water Pretty unique little city. I'm enjoying today's little stroll around Omaha Yeah um, Is this the tallest uh, basketball baseball player in Omaha? Interesting Nebraska doesn't actually have any uh, pro football or baseball teams, but this monument may be in protest of that or something. It's interesting. He's huge. And there's literally nothing here written about what we're looking at. So Omaha wants you to keep your imagination open. Holy cow, have I got something to show you. This 
is amazing. The spirit of Nebraska, the true nomads. Look at this amazing monument. It stretches all the way around this entire block. Travelers, is that awesome or what? <laughs> this has to be one of the most massive, I mean, it's, it just, go look how tall this guy is. <laughs> it just, they're just gonna travel all the way around this entire block. Look at the detail on these horses. That is beautiful. And then just continues right on up. How beautiful is that? Wow. A rough journey, no doubt. I don't think he's got a refrigerator in that covered wagon like I do in the RV, so. <laughs> Omaha is nice. I'd like to spend more time here, but I didn't come here for the big city. I came here for the Lincoln Highway type stuff and just wanted to get some fresh air on the bike. So now I'm gonna head back and spend the rest of the day with Jax. Again, maneuvering the bike in a big city doesn't get any better. So much easier, love it. So I got about 18, 19 miles to get back to Cabela's and I'll uh, catch up with you when I get there. How's that working for you then? Did that work pretty good? Oh, I missed you too, man. By the way, as, as, as it heats up throughout the year and starting right now, actually, uh, I save a bunch of propane by not using the water heater at all this time of year. There's no need to heat the water because the room temperature water in my onboard fresh water tank, I mean, it's 70, 75 degrees just sitting there in the tank. And that's like taking a cold shower, you know? So it's actually really refreshing to just take a room temperature or cold shower, as I say, without using the water heater at all. And uh, really just makes me feel much, much, much cooler on the road and saves a bunch of propane. A couple things I want to talk about real quick in case uh, anybody missed it or new subscribers are wondering, just the fact that summer is on the way and how do I keep cool and survive? You know, how does Jax manage without me in the heat and the blistering heat and everything? Uh, if you're watching this on your laptop, I will put a link up top. You can click on that card and it'll take you to a great video I put together talking about how we survive in the summer if it's over like 80 or 90 degrees, okay? Generally, I try to stay out of really hot climates, but uh, sometimes there's just no avoiding that. So you can watch that for the absolute specifics. But just to give you a quick rundown, if like today, I got back, it was 79 degrees inside the RV. Now, an RV is not like a vehicle, okay? You cannot leave a pet in a vehicle if it's over 75 degrees outside, you just can't do it. But that's because cars don't have screened windows and fans running off of solar all around, keeping air circulating fresh and uh, keeping it cool in the RV. Now it'll only work to a certain extent, uh, as I've noticed, if it is over 90 degrees outside, then fans aren't gonna cut it. It will breach 95 inside, even with my current system with all the fans. So monitoring the uh, thermostat remotely from my phone, I can do my smart start and have it ready already when I leave, you know, with the air conditioning in the cab, Jack knows when the engine starts and I'm not around, he'll go up and sit on the ledge of the couch right there and just bathe in the air conditioning until I get back. Or I just won't leave him very long during hot times. I'll take him, I'll drive the RV around instead of the bike and uh, we'll take his cat stroller out or go for walks like that. Uh, or I will run the generator. I have no problem doing that. I still love to boondock. I still prefer this over an RV park, right? So I'm getting unlimited solar. But if I have to, yes. I will close all the windows and the doors. Jackson and I will sit in here with the generator burning gas for some air conditioning on the roof. And we will make it 70 degrees inside comfortable. But generally, I don't have any of the other concerns that people do that live down in California and Florida and Arizona in the summertime. I don't know what to tell you because I just choose to stay away from those particular areas. But then you got this. I mean, look, we're not even to summer yet and we're already bordering 80 degrees every single day here in Nebraska. So, it's strange, it's hit and miss. I'm comfortable and fine. I don't think I burned today. I look a little red, but I swear I had sunscreen on. I don't care, it'll turn to tan later. Uh, wanted to talk to you about what's going on now. So, 
Last day in Nebraska. Tomorrow I'm gonna head not east. But don't worry guys, I'm gonna take you along for the journey, but I have decided to take a very, very quick break from Lincoln Highway, just like I did in Utah. Uh, before I get into Iowa, I'm gonna go down south a little bit, about 120 miles. I got some friends down there I wanna meet up with. I wanna get a couple things done inside the RV, do all my oil changes and everything, and uh, just hang out with some good people. So there will be a Lincoln Highway break for a couple videos. It's gonna be okay, I swear. If you have to take a couple days off because you just can't stand the fact that I detour from my plan, it's okay, I understand. But we're still gonna find plenty of Lincoln stuff down south even as well. So hang tight guys, Jackson, I'll see you in a couple days on uh, wherever we end up and whatever happens. Have a great day.